Well, hello everybody, and welcome again to my shop. And we're starting on another radio. Even though I haven't quite finished the last one, I have to let some glue dry and things like that, so we might as well get going on this one. It's very similar. The, the last radio I was working on was an RCA A25. It's very similar to this radio in the sense that it's about the same physical size, four knobs. It's very similar. I wonder. I wonder if in the end we're going to find out it's the same chassis in there. Um, but this is more than a radio. Voila, which is French for "there it is." It's a record player. Um, no speed control. Definitely a '78 record player. Pretty interested in checking this guy out. And seeing what happens. There we go. Yeah, this is supposed to slide in from the side, but with this loose, move my hand with this loose, so you can rotate and become a lock on this thing. It's supposed to be like that, so you can slide this pin under here into it. So. Okay, and what about the cartridge? Well, that's the original cartridge. Look at that needle. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll get a close look at that later. But Almost certainly the cartridge in here doesn't work. The, uh, these uh, ceramic cartridges, they have a life. Uh, they have a life whether you use them or not. They have a life even if they're new in the box. They uh, wear out, and from what I understand, it's actually a moisture uh, entering the crystal. So it'd be water molecules entering into the crystal and disrupting its ability to produce a voltage. So they get weak, and eventually they just quit. And I'd be very surprised if that's not the case with this one. And the kind of needle, I'm pretty sure this is the use once needle. So if you had one of these back back then, you would also have a little, you'd have to buy a little uh, uh, container of maybe a hundred needles. And you're supposed to change the needle after every record. Okay, maybe you could play it two or three times, but you were changing the needle that regularly. They were just steel needles. And I suppose they were made a little soft so as not to cut the record grooves. It's impressive to me that the record can stand up to this, what sounds like torture to me, dragging a steel needle through the groove, but uh, but they did. So hopefully we'll be hearing, I have some 78 records, so hopefully when we're done we'll be listening to one, but doubtful whether this cartridge is going to do the trick. It says General Electric right there, General Electric. Let's see what happens when we, oh look, the string is in there because that's just what I finished doing. I don't want to move it too much before we can get a good look at it. Uh, so there's a switch here. Radio, phono. There's four positions. I'm, I think it's a combination tone control. So you have two positions in the radio for tone and two in the phono. That's what I think. I'm not absolutely sure. And over here is the band switch. A, 31, 25, and 19. Now, the A and the A, this really does look like the radio I just finished. There's no push buttons on this one. And I don't think there's any fancy antenna in the back. Let's take a look. This is my first time looking in here, too. There we go. Let's see if I can just bring the camera down a little bit here. See what we see. Get my close-up camera ready here. So 
let's uh, let's take a look here and see. I think I'm going to put on the close-up camera right away. Okay, what do we see? Well, right away what catches my eye are these wires which are sticking out in my face here. And these are shot. You can see someone's applied a little bit of tape, but there's bare wires everywhere. Now what is that? That's the audio. This is the audio connection. Let's see if I can pull it out. So this is a signal from the cartridge up above. There's the plug for it. So um, what else have we got here? So these are the wires that supply power to the motor. And you can see the motor right up in here. And what's all this? There's no mechanism in this, is there? Let me take a look. Well, there is. There's some kind of... I think... It's a little tricky for me to do this here. Now, I'm moving the tone arm up above. You see it come across, and it knocks into that pin and drives the pin back. And I'm, I'm swinging the tone arm over top of the record. So I think this is just an on-off switch. So you pick up the tone arm, and as you swung it towards the record, it turns on the motor, and that'd be the switch. And the wire's there. Coming along here. For some reason, they've been cut. this one. There's a wire hanging right out here. And uh, that looks like an antenna wire that's just fallen off its clips and it's now hanging loose in the uh, radio. It's an insulated wire. It has like a var uh, varnish on it or something. Okay, so here's the plug. It's pretty new, non-polarized plug. Pretty new. Obviously. Well, that tells me we've had somebody working in this radio. There's a sheet of asbestos, I can see it right there. Let's see how this is coming out on the camera. This uh, player is so big, it's blocking my view of my own computer screen, so I'm having some trouble seeing. It's going on a lot of dust in the back of this, too. So there's another case of we're going to pull this radio out and uh, deal with the asbestos at that point. There's a CSA sticker there, Canadian Standards Association. Here's the actual radio. Pretty clear, KM5, 100 watts. Canadian General Electric Company. KM5. Well, that's pretty close to KL70, isn't it? But it's not the same as the last radio we, we did, the RCA A25 and the General Electric KL70 same radio. This one's definitely a different a different radio. Some similarities in how it's laid out. But, well, there's the antenna for it. curious thing here. This piece right here. Not sure what that is. That a little coil? I don't know what that is. And there's the various alignment things that need to be adjusted. It's quite similar to that other radio. It's got a big power supply transformer course. And that's the power plug here to plug in the turntable. There we go. Anything 
anything else I need to detach? Yeah, the speaker. Wow, look at the speaker right there. I didn't look at it. That's a big behemoth. Looks to be in great shape. Caution. There's a caution sticker right on it. Let's see if we can read that. Only if my camera will focus. There we go. Caution. Disconnect power cord from AC outlet before removing speaker plug. Why exactly would they say that? Now, it's got a fuel coil on it, so with the radio operating, this thing's got some power on it. Got some high voltage on it. And there's also the transformer up there, too. So it's actually got two sources of B plus coming to the speaker. And I guess they're worried if you pull that plug out, you're going to get your fingers all over the B plus. And if you have the radio plugged in, there's a chance it's turned on, of course, then you're going to get a, a, a dangerous shock. If you pull the plug out, well, then it's guaranteed you're not going to get a shock. So that's got to be why that's there. And there's a, a, some other information here. There's a tube layout diagram. It says Super Heterodyne Warranty down below. Let's see if we can read any of this. I'm just still enough. Notice. Okay, so this is the notice about uh, having a license and stuff like that. The sale of this the sale and carry a license under something I can't quite read it but it's no it's not technical information about the radio Is there anything on this wall no nothing on the nothing there I've hunted around a little bit for the km5 information I haven't found anything yet <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's look into taking this guy out to do here. So we'll loosen them up, but we'll take it outside to actually uh, draw the chassis out, because that sheet of asbestos there. Ooh, smokes. There we go. That came out after just a couple of turns. It seemed kind of weird. We'll flip it around here. Wah! It's a heavy sucker. There we go. Let's pull the knobs off. Wait a minute, how did that happen? How did that camera get on? Hmm. Okay. Must have bumped the mouse or something at some point. There we go. There we go. Those came off pretty easily. We should have one more. Bolt tender here to take out. Gives. Something funny about this bolt. Hmm. 
No, nope, nothing funny about it at all. Can't seem to get my screwdriver into it. I think the screw's been damaged somehow, or, or the, the slot is blocked, or something's going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, there we go. Okay, the slot is full of junk. It's in there pretty darn tight, too. Whoever put these screws in really bolted them down tight. There we go. Again, that came out with very few turns. It's just catching the last couple of couple of threats. Okay, now. What is that? I keep hearing this. It sounds like something shattering in my shop. I think it's a little bit of brittle debris from the last radio. Just crunching like that when I set this one on it. Don't think it means anything. So are we loose in here? Yeah, okay, so that's ready to come out. Let's separate the uh, speaker plug here. Oh, that came out easy. So this is disconnected. Ah, I think we're ready to take it out. I do think I'm going to do it outside, though. I wonder if I should... Nah, I'm not going to back it. I'll do everything outside. You know what? It's, a, it's fairly nice outside right now, so I should get out there. Well, here we are out on my deck again, and uh, it's a wonderful day. It's uh, 8 degrees. And let me just show you something here, what I'm up against. Okay, if you look at that piece of wood, can you see? It's just covered with little flies. See? It's all little flies. And they're all flying around. They're going in my hair. <laughs> going everywhere. And, now that I'm out here, it's starting to rain, of course. It's, what a mess. But let's get this radio out of here quick. <laughs> yes, yeah, a bunch of maple helicopters. Ah, bugs all over. Jeez. Okay, now. It's not coming out of there so easy. Well, I might have to do that. I think I'll have to do the cabinet later. Just concentrate on the chassis right now. Let's see. Look around this way. Ah. Thank you. 
see what happens to all these bugs in the rain. Chassis aside here. Not much rain here at all, so. Oh my god, there's just a million of those little flies. Can you see the squirrels? One's got a huge paper ball. I don't know if you got that or not. It disappeared into the tree there, so you might not have seen that, but it's pretty funny. What he's gonna do with a huge paper ball? Go fix his nest, I guess. Take care of this thing, see what comes up. flying the dust around now. And I'm holding my breath while I'm up there. Okay, let's dump it again.
my breeze out here. You can catch it on camera, probably not, but there's a little cloud of dust coming out of there. And it's being whisked away in the wind, and I'm standing up wind, of course. Actually, right now I'm hiding behind the camera. Okay. if I jumped on my deck really hard but a million of these flies would take off and I think they'd head right for my hair what's left of my hair anyway wow I've never seen this many out here I wonder if birds like them so there it is I think that's about as much as we can do out here from here well I'll wipe it down a little bit in there it's gonna have to be vacuumed out uh, with a little bit of force to, to really get the last of it out so I'll wipe it up with my my Toronto Maple Leafs rag. It's uh, back into the shop with the radio and the uh, and the cabinet too. So yeah, let's take one more look at those bugs. Wow. Let's see if I can set off some kind of storm of flies. Ready for this? Yeah, I set them off, but I don't know where they came from. <laughs> covered in these flies now. So, if you know anything about Ontario, you know Ontario has a kind of fly called a black fly. The black fly will bite you like a mosquito. The only difference is the black flies stand there and chew. So these are not black flies. Just in case anybody's thinking that this is what black fly, black flies are like in Ontario, no. This is some harmless little thing. But uh, if you go up north from here, there's about a four-week period where you really cannot be outdoors. Uh, or you literally get uh, bit uh, continuously by these uh, black flies, which are terrible. They hurt and all that. So Anyway, that's it for, that's it for outside.